Over the course of history, hundreds of millions of people around the world died of smallpox. Current estimates trace the disease as far back as 3,000 years ago, claiming victims from across Afro-Eurasia before being carried with European colonization to the Americas and Australia, and causing plagues of literally biblical proportions. In the mid-700s, it may have killed as much as a third of Japan's entire population. In 18th century Russia, it reportedly killed every seventh child child, in the 20th century alone, it killed between an estimated 3 and 500 million people around the world. And it was not a fun way to go. Symptoms included fever, vomiting, mouth sores, and fluid-filled lesions on the whole body. About 45% of smallpox victims died from the disease, and those who survived could be blind, infertile, and scarred for life. But by 1980, smallpox had totally disappeared thanks to years of research and coordinated effort, also known as public health. Hi, I'm Hank Green, and this is Study Hall Fast Guides, a series where we explore different college majors. Come with me to find out if a life of eradicating deadly diseases, and not-so-deadly diseases, is right for you. Public health is all about protecting and improving mental and physical health for individual people and their communities. From fighting homelessness to regulating cigarettes to increasing literacy to eradicating smallpox, public health workers hired by the government or private institutions focus on all kinds of different things. They create policy, organize medical programs, educate, advocate, and work directly with communities to keep as many people as possible as healthy and happy as they can be. In order to do that stuff, public health focuses on three Ps — health protection, disease prevention, and health promotion. Those ideas account for a lot of what public health is all about — actionable, data-based initiatives that make a huge difference for people all around the world. You can see all three Ps in action when we look at the fight against smallpox. Like back in the 1600s, communities used health protections, like quarantines, to prevent people from contracting smallpox in the first place. These days, health protection might look like using regulations and laws to keep our environment safe, making sure people have access to stuff like clean water and medical care, and preparing communities for emergencies. But while quarantines could help safeguard some communities against smallpox, they didn't do a lot to combat the disease as a whole. The world needed more targeted preventions, like the world's first vaccine. In 1796, people were still getting smallpox left and right, with the weird exception of milkmaids who had been exposed to cowpox, a similar but way less severe disease they got from cows. So a British doctor named Edward Jenner came up with the very cool, if ethically questionable, idea of slicing open the arm of an eight-year-old boy and just shoving some cowpox into it to see if it would make him immune to smallpox, which, thankfully, it did. Preventions like the smallpox vaccine help stop the progression of illness in at-risk communities before it even started. Other forms of prevention include stuff like routine screenings for certain types of cancer, chemoprophylaxis for HIV, and of course, all those other modern vaccines. All of this completely changed the smallpox game, or it had the potential to, at least. But then, like now, it wasn't so simple to actually get the public to agree to get vaccinated. So other health professionals and organizations spent the next centuries focusing on our final P, health promotion. That wasn't about making the vaccine better, although they definitely did that too, but about educating people about the process, convincing them that it really worked, and figuring out the best system to distribute them until no one on Earth had smallpox anymore. Modern health promotion is concerned with the same large-scale structures, encouraging good health outcomes by educating communities on things like health screenings, vaccination, and nutrition, and creating systems to make all of it accessible to the public. So obviously public health goes way beyond tackling highly transmissible deadly diseases that turn your skin into pus-filled blister bubble wrap. It is a huge field encompassing science, sociology, and public policy. 
And when you study public health, you're kind of studying all of that stuff. But at its core, a public health major is all about learning how people's environments and communities can impact their health, how to untangle those relationships, and how to create the most effective public health interventions. At some schools, you'll have a choice between a public health Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science. A Bachelor of Arts will go more into the human side of things, focusing on the cultural, political, economic, and social justice side of public health. Meanwhile, a Bachelor of Science will get deeper into stuff like epidemiology, environmental science, and data science for a more clinical perspective. Some schools also offer a fast-track bachelor's and master's program in public health where you can get both degrees in five years. Whichever program you pick, it's important to make sure it's CEPH accredited. This is an honor bestowed on worthy colleges by the Council on Education for Public Health, who check to make sure that the public health programs cover all those diverse aspects of public health. Some public health jobs, especially government ones, require you to graduate from a CEPH accredited school, so it's a good idea to do your research before enrolling. And whatever program you attend, you'll probably get started with some core classes on key public health concepts, like the factors that influence people's health and what public health challenges we're facing now. Research and data analysis also figures big in public health, so you'll probably also have to take courses in research methods and statistics, where you will learn how to collect health data about different populations and figure out how to turn your results into important, life-changing conclusions. But in order to do anything with that information, you'll need to understand all kinds of things about why health problems happen, and what makes them worse, and why some interventions work, and why some don't. Higher-level courses on stuff like health equity, healthcare systems, environmental health, public health activism, and more will help you understand the hurdles public health faces, like vaccine distribution. You'll also have a chance to take lots of public health electives, where you can get deep into your favorite topics, like the virology of smallpox, or the historical interplay between smallpox and different social structures, or potential use of smallpox in bioterrorism, or, you know, whatever you are into. In addition to your classes, you will probably also do some field work, where you'll work to collect real data, support community education, plan new initiatives, assist in rollout, or take on whatever other aspect of public health interests you. With the support of working public health professionals, of course. Now, you might also consider adding a minor or double major in a related topic to help you get even more specific about your public health special interest. Like, if you're into sustainable food systems, you might pick up a minor in environmental studies. Or my fellow smallpox geeks might go for a double major in history or or biology. Studying a foreign language can also be super helpful, especially if you're focusing on a place that doesn't speak your native language. Some schools even require it as part of the major. The diversity of public health makes it a great major for lots of different types of students, especially ones who like science and people, and highly communicable diseases that manifest as pus-filled bumps all over the body. Public health is where clinical science meets human systems. And understanding it all can take expertise in a lot of different areas. You'll be making a lot more graphs than your average history major, and doing a lot more anthropological interviews than your average pre-med. So the best public health candidates are all about the bridge between STEM and the humanities. But that does not mean that there is no room for focus. You'll have a lot of space to get deep in the weeds of the projects you really care about. So if you're already super invested in food security, or reproductive rights, or car safety, or eradicating more gross diseases from malaria to tuberculosis to measles to guinea worm, a public health major can help you grok the problems and build solutions that will actually work. But coming up with those solutions can be hard, and getting them into action can be even harder. Between research hang-ups and policy disagreements, progress in public health can be frustratingly slow. And it might take a long time time before you can deliver those solutions that you're so excited about. So if you're the type who likes to see action right away, or if you'd rather be covered in fluid-filled lesions than wrangling a spreadsheet at your desk, you might think about a field like social work, nursing, or medicine. These other kinds of professions are less 200-year-long fight for vaccine acceptance and proliferation, and more shoot a vaccine into a patient's arm today, which can feel more immediately effective than the long administrative struggles of public health. And like we said before, public health is a broad field where your attention will be split between lots of different things. So if you're dreaming of spending your whole days in the library poring over literary references to smallpox, or in the lab looking at viruses through a microscope, you might 
might go for a more straightforward major like history or microbiology. But if you do decide a public health degree is for you, there are tons of post-grad paths that you can follow in both the public and private sector. Right out of undergrad, you could become a community health worker, reaching out to communities to provide the health resources they need, or a public health educator, working to teach people about health initiatives and encouraging them to make positive health choices. Both of these jobs can make you somewhere between $45,000 and $60,000 annually. Or if you're drawn to the policy side of things, you could become an environmental health specialist who makes sure built and natural environments stay safe for the people who use them. You could also become a public health analyst or health policy advisor, using insights from data to make sure policies actually work. Environmental health specialists usually make around $62,000, public health analysts make around $70,000, and those policy jobs can get you something in the high 90s or low 100s. And for those diehard scientists in the crowd, you could become a research analyst and put your data skills to use, or a disease investigator who helps manage all of the as yet uneradicated diseases. Both of those jobs make somewhere between forty dollars to $60,000 or more if you have experience or a master's degree. A public health major is also a great path to grad school, where a higher level degree can open up even more career options. Two obvious choices are the Masters of Public Health or even a Doctorate of Public Health, which unlocks some higher levels of those public health careers. With a higher degree, you could become an epidemiologist who investigates causes of disease and injury on a larger scale, a biostatistician who makes sense of data from medical experiments, or take on leadership and advisory positions in public health organizations. Epidemiologists and biostatisticians make anywhere from $80,000 to over $100,000, and directors of public health programs can make as much or more, maybe even $200,000. You could also get your grad degree in something else related to public health, like social work, nursing, or occupational therapy, or if you love crafting policy and fighting for the underdog, you could go to law school and do it from the courtroom. And also, if if you got cowpox vaccine dreams like Dr. Jenner, you could go to med school. Public health isn't one of the most common pre-med majors, since it focuses so much more on large-scale systems than individual patients, but it definitely sets you up with lots of the social and scientific skills that will help you succeed. And of course, doctors make bank, anywhere from $200,000 to upwards of $700,000. From hunger and malnutrition to asthma, from cancer to illiteracy, from measles to loneliness, you name it, public health will tackle it. Even though smallpox is blissfully eradicated, there are still tons of other public health issues facing the world today. This career is not for everyone, but it is a chance to make a real difference on a global scale, because while doctors might save the lives of individual patients, public health workers fight to save the lives of entire communities. Thanks to these people, nothing is smallpox, but everything is public health. If you want to investigate more degrees before you choose a major, check out our other videos in this playlist. And to find out how to earn college credit with Study Hall, go to gostudyhall.com or click the link here in the description. And if you want to help us out, you can give this video a like and let us know how you chose your degree or what you wish you'd known before you started your degree. And thank you, as always.